In this video, I'll show you how you can simplify an application service that is doing too much by using a rich domain model. We'll evolve our anemic domain model into a behavior-driven one, and along the way, we'll discuss the pros and cons of the decisions that we are implementing. Here's a very typical example of an order service that you will see in many applications that need to place some sort of order. Typically, there will be one core method, let's call it place order, that's responsible for the most complex flow. And it may start simple, but over time it grows in complexity until it turns into something like this. Now obviously this is a contrived example, but try to keep that in mind as we go through this refactor. So what is it doing? It's using a database context, which uses EF Core to fetch a customer from the database. Then it creates a new order for this customer, and based on the incoming parameter, which contains the order items, it goes through each one. It uses an inventory service to check if we have available stock, and then the price service to calculate the line item price. If the customer is a VIP, then it adjusts the price applying a VIP discount and it finally adds this to the order, calculates the order total in the end, and after all is said and done, we also need to check the customer's credit limit and throw some sort of exception if the credit limit was exceeded. Finally, we just add this to the database context and call save changes. So we're not going to focus on using asynchronous methods, this uses just an in-memory database behind the scenes, so I'm not too concerned with that. What I do want to focus on is how can we simplify this application service so that it only does orchestration and all of the business logic is inside of our domain where it can be easily unit tested with the minimal amount of abstractions. Now, the good thing here is I already wrote some order service tests, which are going to initialize an in-memory database context, seed some initial data, and then we can use the actual instance of the order service along with its two dependencies and the database context, of course, to execute a couple of test cases that are going to verify the behavior inside of the application service. So if I go ahead and run the test cases, you will see that they are currently all passing, which is a good thing, and this will help us solve any regressions that we may run into as we go through this refactor. So I'll close this down for now, and let's go back to the order service. And how do we go about moving the logic that's inside of the order service into our domain? Well, we first have to understand what our domain is. So currently, I have this models folder with your typical anemic domain models. How do you know they are anemic? Well, because they don't contain any behavior. You just see properties with getters and setters, which means they're just bags of data without any behavior. And you're going to see this in all of the remaining entities, the order, the order item, as well as the product. Now, we don't necessarily need to have behavior in all of them, but having the behavior in some of them is definitely useful. So I want to focus on the order entity and show you how we can push some of the logic from the place order method into our domain entity and this in turn should help us encapsulate the business logic in one place which improves the cohesion of our design and it also simplifies the application service so that it doesn't have to deal with too many responsibilities. So one thing you can do and this is a sort of defensive coding approach is prevent anyone else inside of the application from being able to instantiate an order and how you can do this is by creating a private constructor and now the application service isn't able to instantiate a new order directly. Instead, you will expose an API in the form of a factory function that's going to allow the caller to instantiate an order. So let's call this method create. And for now, let's just pass in a customer object, which we'll use to set the customer ID the same way we're doing here. So I'm going to take out this piece of code and move it into my domain entity. And now I can set the customer ID based on the customer parameter. Of course, I have to return the order to satisfy the contract. And then I can update my application service to say order create and pass pass in the customer. Of course, I forgot to make this method static, so I can't call it, but let's fix that. And now my application service should compile. And just to be on the safe side, I recommend that you rerun the tests after making any change, just to make sure you didn't break anything. As you can see, all of the tests are still passing, so our change didn't cause any trouble. Now, what's the next thing we could move into the domain? Well, this part of the code here, which is responsible for creating the line items, can definitely be part of the create method. Now, how do we do it? Well, the simplest way is to just copy everything into your domain and then figure out what it is that you're missing. So you can see we're missing the items, which we are iterating over. And this is a DTO that contains the product ID and the quantity from what I can see. So we may want to create a strongly typed object to represent this, or you could use a tuple. Now, I do recommend using a concrete type for your parameters, but to make this example simple, I'll still use a tuple. So let's call this the product ID. And then the second argument is going to be the quantity. Of course, we 
can make this uppercase to fit the naming that we are already using and let's call this the items so now i can iterate over the items and access the product id and the quantity properties the next thing we are missing is the inventory service and the pricing service and this is a topic of a lot of debates should you be passing your dependencies into the domain and what are the implications of this well obviously in the case of the inventory service and the pricing service there might be some external calls involved and of course this is hidden behind the abstraction represented by the interfaces the i inventory service and the i pricing service you don't really know what's happening inside of the implementations so in that regard passing the abstraction into the domain does make sense however just keep in mind that there should be a domain service and not a general purpose abstraction that could contain a bunch of methods unrelated to the use case that we are using it for another way that you could explore is by passing in a delegate is going to execute the logic that you need quick intermission here i'm working on something that's going to help you master domain driven design and how to apply it in complex dotnet projects if you want to learn more check out the pinned comment that's going to be right below this video now let's go back to our example so let's take a look at the inventory service it has this get stock method which takes in as an argument a product id and returns an integer representing how much is left in stock so you can represent this with a function taking in a grid value and returning an integer and let's call this get stock for product and how you could use this is in place of the stock check using the inventory service you just call this function and pass it the product id and suddenly your code will compile and you don't necessarily have to depend on the i inventory service from the calling code what you would need to provide is just inventory service get stock and you can pass this in as a method group now keep in mind that this will capture the inventory service instance so if that gets disposed you might run into some problems and obviously if this is an asynchronous service you will have to use a task now this is definitely an interesting technique but i don't prefer using it too much so i will revert to just depending on the inventory service and i can now say inventory service and i want to reference the interface and let's call this the inventory service i'll update this call here and now my method should compile and we can do the same thing using the pricing service so let's specify that and i have to update this and now my code should compile and you can see that everything else just works now we are still missing a couple of things inside of our order service first let me make sure i'm passing in these dependencies correctly then i'll get rid of this for each here because we moved all of that into the domain however one thing that is missing is constructing the line items a couple more things that are left in the domain is setting the order total and then checking the credit limit i'll move all of that into order create like this and you can see that this just works so we're moving code around while making our application service simpler and note that here we depend on the database directly while in the order service we are just depending on abstractions which makes the order create method very easily testable with any mocking library out there you can just mock the implementations of these interfaces and have them return what you need to satisfy the use case that you're testing so using this approach definitely simplifies unit testing your domain entities now i did forget to pass in the line items and I'll have to use a projection here to select for each line item the product ID and the line item quantity and now this is all that's left inside of the place order method so let's rerun the tests to make sure that we didn't break anything and all of the tests are still passing and this is all I'll be doing in the order service and now let's see how we can polish off the order create method implementation with the current design anyone is able to add order items to the order because the collection is public and we're not really enforcing anything through the design so a very common approach is exposing this as a read-only collection you'll remove the property setter and moreover you also want to add a private collection that's going to hold the actual data so let's add a list that's going to contain the line items and then the property can just expose the contents of this list as a read-only wrapper next you'll notice that this now breaks our code because a read-only collection doesn't contain an add method however our backing field does and this prevents anyone from outside the order class to be able to add a line item and then we can start moving things around inside of the order class to encapsulate each piece of logic so for example the order total is calculated at the end of this method and we don't necessarily have to do this why don't we make the order total a computed property where we can access the backing collection and just sum the line total for each line item and use that as the order total so now there's no need to set this after iterating over the line items and this should 
shouldn't break anything inside of our code. If I retry my tests after making this change, you'll see that all of my tests are failing. And this is because of some limitations of EF core and working with read-only properties. So what you can do is define a getter and then an empty setter. So this is still a read-only calculated property, but now it should work with EF core. I know this isn't really ideal, but it gets the job done. So now we got rid of that piece of code inside of our factory method, and we can start moving more logic around. For example, we can ensure that the credit is within limit for our customer, and we can call that here and just pass in the customer instance. Of course, we'll have to use the order instance to access this method. This is because it uses the total property to validate this check. And of course, we run the test to make sure we didn't cause any problems. So everything still works. So one more thing I want to do is to have a method that's going to encapsulate this logic here for adding a line item to the order. It could look something like this, where we pass in a product ID, the quantity, the unit price, and if this is a VIP customer, then we can encapsulate the logic for calculating the final price and adding the line item to the order. So now our code here would become order add item and we can pass in the product ID, the quantity, the unit price, and if the customer is a VIP. And this is what we are left with in the create method. It's now significantly simpler. This is something that you could easily unit test with a couple of test cases. And you also have some helper methods inside of the order where it's very clear what they are doing and why you might need them inside of this entity. So now let's discuss some of the drawbacks of what we just did. So one thing I want to highlight again is having a dependency on your services from a domain entity. In this case, it's fine because it's just a stock check and fetching the price. But if this were a complicated method call, that could be potentially unreliable. If this were something that could cause a race condition and we need some checks and balances around that, then you probably want to move that away from the domain and just depend on the results of that operation. So we will still execute this inside of the application layer, the place order method, and just pass the results to the domain. Then I already highlighted this, but you definitely want your parameters to be strongly typed. It's going to make extending them easier without breaking the application code. What I mean by this, if I just add another element to the tuple, let's say I introduce a new property called extra discount, then any place in the code that's calling the create method is suddenly going to break because this is a breaking change. If I were to use a type and added that as a property with possibly some sensible default value, then my code would still work. And then we could have an entire debate of whether or not using rich domain models even makes sense. For some teams, they just prefer to keep everything in their application services, and this is completely fine if this works for you. But for me, keeping the logic that's already coupled to a specific domain entity within that entity itself allows me to simplify my design, it helps me understand my domain better, and it also makes it easier for me to add a bunch of unit tests to cover all of the business logic that I might have in that domain entity, and this makes it simpler to evolve my application in the future. Let me know in the comments what you think about evolving your application to use a more behavior-driven domain model. If you want to learn more about using domain-driven design, take a look at this video next. Make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm so this gets recommended to more .NET developers. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, stay awesome!